everyone, welcome to another Monday morning art talk. So today what I just wanted to discuss, what many of you may have already heard about, um, and I'm glad that it came to light, was what went on with Sausage Party and that movie, the animated movie that came out. I personally had gone and seen it before I heard about all this, and I thought it was very well done and I thought it was very clever. Um, you know, it, it was entertaining for sure. But then afterwards, when you hear about just the madness that went on, it almost like puts like a little pit inside you like, oh man, I, I supported that, um, what they did. And, and what they did, if you haven't read about it, and I hope that now that it's come out and it's on people's mind that some action is taken because this is the time to act. You got to strike at these moments when it's being spread, when it's being talked about, but these animators were, you know, abused in ways. They were just, and which happens in many studios, um, which has been reported, not every studio, I'm not claiming every studio is bad by any means, but what, I'm, what we know about what's happening is what happened in this studio, where these artists were told to work overtime without pay, they were, they were getting sick, they were getting stressed out, there was seemed like a lot of mayhem, madness, going on and the ones that chose to leave the production were then um, even though they worked on the movie for over a year or so were then told that they uh, their, their names weren't even on the credits anymore it's just it's just this abuse to where I you know the, the and I and I hate to sort of use this term but I'm going to use it in the fact that the rich get richer and the artists get screwed and what's happening is that they made so much money they spent 19 million dollars so a lot of the times what's happening is everyone's just trying to do things faster quicker cheaper you know how can we get this out and beating these deadlines trying to get to these it's a race it becomes a race of content how fast can we get it out and we got to get it out by this time so it puts a lot of pressure on a lot of people to get it made and they're trying to get under budget because they don't want to spend money um, and so it was always fascinating to me with the industry is every time a production would do so well and the ratings went skyrocketing on a movie, the next time around they lowered the budget. And it made no sense. It's like, why are you lowering the budget when you're getting paid more money now through advertising and everything else that's going to come in the merchandise and who knows everything that's going to be involved. But it's just disheartening to know that. Again, this is how the artists are being treated. It's, it's sort of like this, we're a dime a dozen. We can just, uh, you know, they, they, they'll take the job. They're desperate, they want it. And that's how they look at the artists when opposed to what happens at this moment is no one person can do it alone. You cannot do it alone. And, and, and I'm saying, if you're gonna try to, to raise hell and speak up and do that, some of you may have experienced it, where you're you're the one that gets kicked out and thrown out and no one cares and people are whispering behind the door, did you hear what happened to Jimmy over there? Dang, man, don't say anything. But yet reality is when everyone unites and comes together as a whole, well, then the production will cease to keep going on because you can't all of a sudden in the middle of a production just... Uh, just, just uh, stop and start hiring new people. It's going to be impossible. It's going to be a nightmare. But together, that's what needs to be brought up and talked about. Otherwise, the abuses in that sense keep happening and artists keep taking, getting advantage of. And I understand that it's exciting, you know, to get into this industry and, and, and be a part of it. But do you want to be a part of something that's going to just wear you out and destroy you? Um, I don't think so. I mean, you got to go through that experience. You're going to have to try to determine if that's what's going on. And if that's the case, you got to do something about it, which is going to be uh, very important. Um, I also just want to say that at this sort of time when this is going on, um, that it's going to be, um, you know, again, that time to act where you got to start thinking about can Canada, because where this is happening too, is can there be a union that starts to get created? And it's going to require someone to do something and stand up and, and can collaborate and take action and make this sort of thing happen, because it's not going to happen by itself. It can't happen if you're just talking about we should do this. It's like taking the action and doing it. Like we have the union out here. Um, in Los Angeles and at times when they need to, they've come to bat and play and, and sort of help artists um, in situations. And that's something that maybe they could look into that with the union that's out here and see now that so much of this work is going over there, we got to come together. It's like Los Angeles, where the hub of this is and all the work that's going to Canada, somehow 
we need to, um, it's got to be one thing in, in a way. And that way, because I've heard for years how just artists in Canada just aren't getting the, the wages and it's expensive to live out there, you know? So again, it's like, it's really just just making that voice. And when you see these guys who are, they, they're spending the 19 million and all of a sudden, they, you know, they'll make over 40 million. They don't know what they're going to make. It could be a complete flop, but that's, hey, that's the risk you take. When you're a giant studio and you already got millions of dollars, and you're doing these sort of things. That's that's the price you got to pay to for quality. And I'm I'm sorry and get things done. It just to me it's just a clear win-win situation. And I think if you make the artists happy and the studios are happy, this is where the, they unite and they come together and everyone's happy. And then you're you're excited to work on stuff and you want to make things happen. And I just don't understand that mindset where just in business alone where why wouldn't you want to make your employees uh, proud and, and excited and happy to, to put out this product, giving them incentive, doing something to make that collaboration so much better and so much greater and the energy and who knows what magic you can come from that. And I think the studios that do that and the studio that changes their ways and continues to do that, well, they, you're going to reap rewards. You're going to get the rewards. They're going to come because people are going to – um, want to be a part of it. People aren't going to be working for your company and all of a sudden decide this just sucks and I want out. All right. And another thing where I was reading just a lot of the comments and a lot of people were saying, now I'm doubting I, this is what I wanted to do, get into the industry. And now I have doubts. And if this is what it's going to be like, what it does, it doesn't have to be this way. I mean, it's you, you are in control. You got to decide whether you want to go into this or not. And that means just looking at contracts because the contracts, a lot of these studios, they, they have contracts. Not all studios are contract based, but you'll come in and you'll work on specific things for a short amount of time. And it might be just an agreement um, that you have like a deal memo and it, it's sort of light. There's other things where they get a little bit more intensive. You're signing this contract. You got to make sure that you're reading all that fine print. I mean, personally, I'm hearing stories that in the contracts, it's stating that you're supposed to work uh, over hours and these extra long hours. And to me, it's like, what? You know, for nothing? For free? Why? You know, I understand if I need to work overtime and crunch and everything else, but hey, let's get paid for that overtime. Make it worth my while and let's set realistic budgets. And not, 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 look what's happening, people, producers, people. If you're watching this, look at what is happening in the industry. Look at what is happening with the artists. The artists are up in arms, you know, in a point, and it's going to get to that boiling point. So don't you want a bunch of happy little people just sitting and working with you and a bunch of team players working with you? I mean, it just, it just makes sense. So, so gather, get them together and find out what they really want. And a lot of the times the pressures are these outrageous deadlines. Why does it matter? I, I get it. If you're doing a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie, you want to get it out by a certain date. Well, that means you got to get your production started even earlier. And that means that you got to quit messing around and get these scripts written and get them made and quit changing something, things every two seconds and be decisive and make things happen and commit and get that story solid and get it where you need to be and then start moving forward and stop wasting all the uh, the money and, and people's time. And then all of a sudden you get to that rush where people are, they're dying out there. I mean, if, if only some of these producers and all these people that are running the big ship and these big wigs could hear, what they need to do is like undercover boss. They need to pretend that they're an animator and they're getting hired and they go, and that might be a great reality TV series, is uh, an undercover uh, executive in the animation industry going, into the studio system and seeing what gets talked about at lunch and what the real deal is and what's happening out there because you're at that threshold where it's there's a revolution starting it's going crazy and you don't you don't want this because now that sausage party instead of getting great press it's just getting slammed everyone's just like boo against it where do you want that and all the animators that worked in it? They want to take pride in it like, hey, man, it's a success. I worked on a movie and I did this animation and I did this scene. You want to be joyful. You want to be excited about that. And that's what's unfortunate about what's happening in that situation. So if you want to get into the industry, by all means, get into the industry. Just know there's a lot of jobs in this industry. Not all studios are bad. Make sure you're reading the contracts. Make sure you talk to people and you understand things that are happening there. But um, I mean, come on, it's just it's getting just a little bit ridiculous out there. So I hope things uh, people just stand up and especially in Canada, 
Just you guys have to do it. You guys have, someone has to do something out there. And I don't know who it's going to be and who's going to come forward and, and start connecting and letting people know, let's, let's get together, guys. Let's start a meeting. Let's meet at this place and let's build. That's, that's how everything starts. And that's how the union was formed coming out uh, in this part of the world, uh, out here. This is what needs to be done if you want things to change. Otherwise, it's going to constantly be that um, abuse uh, and, and we don't want that, all right? Um, and just, again, realize that during a production, all you guys, it can't just be one man standing. All you guys have to come together and decide, hey, speak up, say something. And like I've mentioned before, sometimes the producers and different people, they don't really know all the madness that's going on. They, they think that it just gets done. And the same thing with people who are working overtime at the studios just right now who are doing storyboards or design or anything else. And they're working way off to these hours and not getting paid. And all of a sudden, the stuff's getting done. The produ oh, great. You, got, you, met, you met your quota. You got your deadline. Everything's done. But they don't realize all the overtime hours you're doing for free. It's just like, hey, I'm working from this time to this time. Anything over that is going to be paid. This is unrealistic. I'm going to do my best now. you got to make sure you're doing your best and you're not showing up at like noon and then leaving at five in the afternoon. You know, you got to put in your eight hours, whatever it's going to be. And again, just uh, just look at those contracts because um, they're, they're important. It's the little fine print and contracts are made to be adjusted. Now, you got to realize that you're going to write something, say, I don't agree to these terms, but that's what contracts are for in negotiation. But if they say, hey, no, that's not what we do here. Well, then, uh, OK, then that's uh, th then I'm not going to do this. Th then th then you got to be willing to sometimes you got to be willing to walk away. And I know it's hard and don't go. It's easy for you to say. It's not easy for me to say. I think the reality is you got to make that decision, cross that bridge when you get to it and decide, do you want to put yourself in this situation where you're going to be go crazy and then lose your mind and then get stressed out and worn out and beat to the, you know, it's, it's just going to be horrible. Um, so anyway, I mean, I, you know, I had my experience when I was at uh, Sony Television Animation and I was working on the Cleveland show. I mean, just the, the expectations of, for all the people and the artists to just bust their ass on those shows and work so hard in these overtimes. And, you know, you got to do so many 50 something hours a week. It's like, what happened to the 40 hour week? And what happened to, you know, if you don't do it, you got to come in on the weekends. It's like, come on, man. That's the thing, because we can just abuse you. We can just abuse you. You're just an artist. You're, you know, you sort of, what, what are you going to do? Say something, do something, make something happen. That's it. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Take care. This is Steven and I just wanted to tell you about this cool thing that I'm doing right now through my website at silvertunes.com. It's a Skype mentorship. In a sense, what I want to do is just talk to you, meet you, tell me about things that are happening in your life. See if there's anything that I could do to help you. I can look over your artwork, do your portfolio, and just maybe try to push you in the right direction that you want to take your life and your journey. All right. So you can go to silvertunes.com, go to classes, click on mentorship, and you can learn all about it. We can try to arrange a time, set up a date. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. Um, and I just wanted to make it just very affordable just to open it up because I love doing this. I love meeting people from all over the planet. It's a really cool thing. And uh, with this technology, why not? So that's it. Thanks. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> go. go back. Go back. Go back. Great. Go back. Go back. Ha, ha, ha.